On Sunday, a man went to the sergeant's gas station and threatened a female employee with a knife. He said he was going to cut her face. This is a felony crime of violence. Then he spit on the woman, which is also a crime. He quickly left the scene using a bike. It was such a serious crime that law enforcement broadcast a be on the lookout alert to find and arrest this criminal. Two deputies from my office and an officer from the Mulberry Police Department counted him shortly thereafter. He still had the knife from the previous felony he'd committed. This criminal then gave a false name to hide his identity. This is yet another crime. He was hiding a dangerous, violent criminal record. This man is a convicted felon who's been charged with or convicted of six assault-related incidents in the last 10 years, including multiple assaults on police officers. When the deputies and the police officer tried to arrest this man with such a violent history, he aggressively tackled one of the deputies, slamming that deputy's head into the concrete, causing a serious concussion. The criminal then punched the deputy in the head. Moments later, a citizen began to film the encounter. None of the citizen video covers the previous violence by the criminal, but the dash cam video covers some of it. The citizen video is troubling to watch, as is often the case when officers are trying to arrest a violent criminal with a history of assaulting police. I understand that many people who have seen the video have concerns about the use of force used. Here's what I've done to ensure accountability and transparency to this entire situation. I referred the matter to the state police for an independent investigation. It's the right thing to have another agency look into what happened. We will fully cooperate with them. Of course, we will also fully cooperate with federal authorities who are reviewing the matter. I immediately put both deputies on administrative leave. The law doesn't require me to do this, but it's the best practice. This criminal refused medical attention on the scene but I assist, insisted he be taken to the hospital. They treated him for scrapes and bruises, but the doctors did not diagnose a concussion. He was immediately released and taken to jail. Even though he did not have a concussion, I directed jail medical staff to put the criminal on concussion protocol and check him on him every 15 minutes to ensure he was in good medical condition. Some people want to know if the deputies will be disciplined for the use of force they used. That's a fair question. I've directed my staff to begin a thorough disciplinary investigation into the actions of the deputies. This will not interfere with the outside investigation in any way. As always, any employees who violate policy or law will be held accountable. I will publicly announce any actions I may take following this disciplinary investigation. Viral videos create a lot of heat but little light. Social media chatter is full of self-proclaimed experts on use of force, all based on the smallest snippet of what happened after this man threatened to come, cut someone with a knife and then violently assaulted a deputy while resisting arrest. I ask everyone to consider the action I've already taken to ensure transparency and accountability and withhold judgment until all facts are identified and verified. Employees of our office have been subject to online harassment and threats, which is both irresponsible and illegal. Please let the outside investigators do their work. I understand some people are angry. It's okay to be angry. Remember. All of us want the right thing to be done in this matter, but doing the right thing involves following all the right procedures and being transparent about it. That's why I released this video. Thank you.